ho, ho, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, from scratch, Eggs Benedict with homemade Canadian bacon. Yam it up! Growing up, there was a tradition in my family of starting every Christmas morning with mimosas and Eggs Benedict. It's such an indulgent meal that it really is best saved for special occasions. So this Christmas, I wanted to show you how I make Eggs Benedict, but it seemed a little lame. So we're gonna go one step further and make our own Canadian bacon. But the king of all brunch items deserves a little more respect than that. So I'm gonna show you how to break a pork loin out of a pig, and it is going to be delicious. This is the middle section of a pig. If you were unaware, I am the butcher, baker, and candlestick maker at local barbecue food truck, Leroy and Lewis, where we get in whole hogs and half hogs every week for our whole hog barbecue. And occasionally, we break them down for some fun cuts. So this is a half hog we got this week. I already took the ham off, which is this side, turned that into sausage, and the shoulder off, which is this side, which went into our pulled pork. So what we're left with is this beautiful middle section where we've got the full rib cage and everything else attached to it. So looking at this cut, it's pretty easy to figure out what is what. This is your rib cage right here. This is your little flat meat that's on the back of every rack of spare ribs. And essentially what we're gonna do is take a cut and go right about there. And that'll give you your baby back ribs right here and your full spare ribs right there. And like we talked about in each respective rib video, the top side of the spare ribs is the pork belly, which runs right through here and all the way down. And the meaty back side of the baby back ribs is the pork loin, which is right here. And that's what we're after today. So first thing we're gonna do is bust out our handy dandy meat saw and split these ribs right down the middle to give us our two separate racks of ribs. What a beautiful piece of meat. All the best cuts all in one. I wish you could pick these up at the grocery store. Look at the amount of fat back on this thing. This is like the fattiest pig I've seen in quite a while. But great for sausage making or making lard. Simply enough, we're gonna follow that line I just drew. Typically you'd have a bandsaw just come and rip this thing right in half, but I don't have a backyard bandsaw yet. So we're gonna take this little meat saw, link in the description, and we're gonna go right through these bones. Nothing to it. Now we're gonna go through with our handy dandy boning knife and just finish the cut. <laughs> Beautiful. And there we have it. This is our spare rib side and this is our back rib side. And as for this spare rib side, I'm just gonna go through and trim this up a little bit, take off this skirt meat, just like any other rack of ribs. We're also gonna find the very last bone here and cut this little end section off. This is just a little section of extra pork belly. Skin on, ooh. And what we're left with is a bone-in belly. So this is a rack of spare ribs with all the bacon still on there, all the belly. So I'm gonna take this skin off, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt. And there we go, skin comes off. It's gonna go through now, take some of this extra fat off because it's a particularly fatty pig. Shape it up, trim it like an actual rack of spare ribs. And there we have it. This is soon to be a rack of bone-in bacon ribs. If you wanna see the whole process on how we do that, you can head over to the Leroy and Lewis Patreon page. It's one of our first videos where we go through this entire process of pulling these ribs out of a full pig, curing them, smoking them, serving them up to make something that's pretty damn special. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Now onto the loin side. First thing I'm gonna do on this section is cut right through here. Get this vertebrae out of there because we won't be able to cut individual ribs through that. And then we can take all these feather bones off at the same time. And again, we're gonna go through in with our knife and follow right along this top feather bone here and get this whole spine removed. Trying to save as much meat as possible using just the tip. And the whole thing comes right off. Bam. Great for stock. I forgot my bone duster. Now that we've got this rib section isolated, vertebrae removed, we can go ahead and pull these baby back ribs out. And to do that is super easy. Just gonna follow the bones here. Because I'm trying to maximize my pork loin in this situation, I'm gonna cut pretty close to these. But if I was going for baby backs, I might leave a little extra meat on them. 
And just like that, baby back ribs removed. So here we have our pork loin, boneless, big old fat cap on there, skin on. So first thing I'm gonna do is take off all this skin, remove that fat back, and then we'll be left with a beautiful pork loin. Just wanna get as close to that skin as possible. Make some chicharrones out of it. This is about a 290 pound pig, I believe. But again, this one's particularly fatty. And just like that, skin removed. Now to tackle all of this fat back. We're just gonna go layer by layer. I've only done this a handful of times, so to all the actual butchers out there, please go easy on me. And there we have it. After removing an insane amount of fat back, we are left with a beautiful loin with a nice fat cap on there. And I could take this down even further and just pull out the individual muscle, but I'm gonna leave some of this fat in there and on top because Canadian bacon can be a bit lean. So I'm gonna keep it just the way it is, add a little extra fat to the party, kind of get a little hybrid situation going on. And just like with a brisket or anything else that's got a fat cap on it, I like to do the old chud scrape. Just get rid of all your knife marks, make it look nice and smooth. And because this is pretty long, I'm gonna cut it right in half. And there we go. Beautiful little pork loin in there, nice fat cap. Might take that down a little bit further. That's gonna make some delicious Canadian bacon. But if you enjoyed this little segment, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more butchery. Now that we've got our loins pulled out of the pig, it's time to put them on cure. There's two types of cure you can use, a dry brine like we discussed in the bacon video, or a wet brine like we've done in the ham brine spare ribs episode, or the turkey leg video. This time we're going with a wet brine. It's gonna be very similar to the ham brine, which starts out with one gallon of water in this pot, to which we're gonna add a whole bunch of kosher salt. This is a much saltier brine than anything we've done on the channel so far, and that's because this is more of a cure than a brine. So we're simply gonna mix this up, whisk this all together until everything dissolves. You could heat this up, which would make this process a lot quicker, but if you just whisk it for a while, it'll all dissolve eventually. And there we have it. Next up, we are going in with some pink curing salt. This is the main ingredient in anything cured, anything bacon, anything charcuterie. This is what's gonna give it that really nice pink color, that cured flavor. It's gonna keep it safe during the cold smoke. A very necessary ingredient for a lot of sausages and pretty much all charcuterie. Now we're gonna go in with a little bit of sugar. You can use white sugar, brown sugar, but because this is Canadian bacon, I'm going in with some wonderful maple syrup. Gotta be done. And of course, I'll have recipes and exact ingredients in the description of this video, along with all the tools and equipment I use throughout this whole process. And that's really all you need for a good Canadian bacon brine, but we're gonna go in with a little bit of extra flavor in the form of some sage leaves, a couple of bay leaves, why not? We'll go in with some thyme and rosemary, tis the season, add that little Christmassy vibe going on. We're just gonna let those sit in there and then it's time to add in our pork. Well, we're at it. We'll throw in a few crushed cloves of garlic as well. Beautiful looking pork loin. So, in it goes. Oh, it's gonna be so good. In it goes. And again, this is a very high concentration of salt in this brine as opposed to something like a chicken brine or something like that. So, this should only take a good two days. If you were using a thicker loin, you might wanna go three or four. If you're using something smaller, you may wanna go less, but I'm gonna give it two days and I'll check back in in a little bit. Into the fridge, this goes. After two days of brining and curing away, I pulled the pork loins out of the brine, gave them a rinse to make sure there was no particulates or extra salt on the surface of the meat, and then I put them on this very rack in the fridge overnight. This is gonna help dry out the meat and form a bit of a pellicle, which is gonna help smoke it here, dry out the meat, and give us that wonderful charcuterie vibe Canadian bacon. So, now it's time to smoke them up. Sometimes it's difficult to decide which smoker to fire up at the old chud shop. Get it going on the new one, right? Mm-hmm. Nicely greased. So we're gonna rock these at right around 225, 250 degrees. This fire's on its way down. It's all about how smoky you want your Canadian bacon to be. If you smoked it at 150 for four hours, it'd be a lot smokier than if you smoked it for 250 for two hours. But at the end of the day, we're aiming for an internal temperature of 150 degrees. After three, four hours of smoking at 225, 250, these pork loins reached an internal temperature of 150 degrees. I pulled them off, vac sealed them up, and now it's time to head home for the holidays. 
I'm dreaming tonight of a place I love even more than I usually do. And although I know it's a long road home, la -dee -da, I'm telling you I'll be home for Christmas. Bradley, don't you have English muffins to make? Oh yeah. It is a beautiful, snowy, cold Christmas Eve here in New Hampshire, and I think it's time to focus on item number two of our Eggs Benedict, which of course is some English muffins, but not any English muffins. We're gonna make them from scratch. <laughs> Ooh. Clinkies, mm. clinkies. Cheers. All right, first things first in the English muffin making game. First, Brooke, say hello. Hi. Becca, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's combine the warm milk with the water. Oh, yay. Next, we're going to go in with the active dry yeast. Do I do the tiny whisking? Let's take your time, please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in with the sugar, too, while we're at it. The sugar will help feed the yeast. It's bubbly. Beautiful. All right, Becca, now let's take the flour, bread flour that is, into the bowl, in. I did it. Perfect. <laughs> Salt, oh yeah. Well, let's attach that dough hook while we're at it. I did it. <laughs> Mixing. How's it looking? Frothy, bubbly. What's that? There's a snake in my boot. Actually, the cowboys in the West did have problems with snakes in their boots. When they took their boots off for the night and sleeping outside, the boots were warm and the snakes would go in there. And if they didn't check in the morning, they found a real surprise in their boots. Frothy mixture. In. Beautiful. Butter. Buttery. In. All right, oh twin sister of mine, shut her down and let's get her a knead. We'll let this knead for about eh, 10 minutes or so till it comes together. Get a nice little amount of gluten developed. I think we need to do another take. <laughs> Happy holidays. Oh, look at them go. My little elves. Look at that bowl. Nice and plump. Oh, big boopy. We're doing a damp towel for one hour. Mom, what can we do for one hour? Let's play dominoes. Now it's time to start cutting them out. Shall we try the Bruins talk? I think so. How are the Bruins doing this year? I don't even want to talk about the Patriots, so I'd rather talk about the Bruins. There you go. You can make these whatever size you want. Maybe we should make a giant one and make a big old English muffin pizza one of these days. Ooh, that sounds yummy. It's a shame that you didn't have anything festive to wear for this video. You think it's overdone? No. Looking nice and plump. What do you think, Dad? Looks good. This dough is actually very easy to work with. You can't have an English muffin without the cornmeal bottom. Oh, yeah. Put them right into the cornmeal and let them rise for another, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Wait till they get nice and plump. And then we will toss them onto a skillet and be left with some beautiful plump. English muffins. How are these looking? They're looking good and delicious. <laughs> Gonna get a medium low heat on there. I think it's time to get these muffins a cooking. Yay. That's the beauty of an English muffin, folks. You don't have to bake them. <laughs> Looks like an English muffin to me. Becca, have you ever made uh, English muffins before? No, but I've always wanted to try. Ooh, very nice and flat. Oh, very nice. Nice work, nice. elves. You got those nooks, got those crannies. Could have made them a little bit bigger, but you know what? For an Eggs Benedict? It'll I be all right. All right, we're bagging these bad Larrys until tomorrow morning with the Eggus Benedictimus. <laughs> Pro tip with any baked goods, Brooke. If you put it in a bag overnight, they kind of collect the moisture, soften. That's why store-bought bread is always way more soft than homemade bread. It is a beautiful Christmas morning. We got the pork loins out of the cryo vac, and now we're getting them sliced up. It's really convenient having a uh, meat slicer around, isn't it? It is. There's only one proper way to split an English muffin. And how is that? With a fork. Ooh. Now it's time to make the piece de resistance, the hollandaise. Into this blender, we're going to go in with 
How many egg yolks is that? Seven. Eight. Good guess. In. We're going to go in with a nice fat pinch of tarragon, freshly chopped. I love tarragon. It's my favorite herb. Nice pinch of fresh lemon juice. A nice cheek of lemon. We're going with a fat pinch of salt. Three sticks of boiling hot butter. Oh, it's so thick. Mm. Hollandaise for the holidays with the holidays. <laughs> Hollandaise is done. Bacon is cooking away. Now it's time to poach some eggs in some just under a boil water. Turn that down a little bit. I've got some eggs in a strainer here from this method developed by the only J. Kenji Lopez Alt. We're gonna go in with a big old pinch of salt and we're just gonna go right on in. Boop. Ooh, blimp. Uh, ooh. Ave Maria. <laughs> ooh. Yeah, that is a spot. Thank you, Brad. Mm hmm. Would you say Eggs Benedict is the best part about Christmas? I like it. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is my version of how to make Canadian bacon and eggs benedict from scratch. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try because just like anything store-bought, making it at home is miles better. And depending on what you put in your brine, you can really make this recipe your own. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out so much. Hi. Let me know if you want to see more butchery. And while you're down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me cook next. And until the next time I see you, please have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and go cook something outside. Peace. Also, be sure to keep an eye on my Instagram. In the next week, I'm going to be doing a year-end gear review and Q&A. So if you're watching this in real time, now's your chance to ask me any questions.